Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Husqvarna K760 power cutter. Customer complaint is that it won't start. The procedures I use to diagnose the problem with this saw are similar for a lot of equipment and much of the Husqvarna power cutter lineup. We're going to pull the hood off this thing and look underneath. And the air filter, while it's not clean, it's not so dirty that it's the reason why this won't start. What I am going to do under here, though, is look in the cylinder because these saws are subject to so much dirt and dust, and some of it's always bound to get into the engine. We want to look and see if the cylinder is in good condition or not, and if the machine has good compression because. Why do an expensive repair on an engine with low compression that's not going to run or last? In this case, we're going to use a video scope to look in the cylinder and just look for any scoring or scratches. And I do see a little bit of, let's call it heavy wear. It's not scored, but it's enough heavy wear that we're going to put a compression gauge on it and just check it out and make sure. Now the proper way to do a compression test is with the throttle open. You're going to hook up your gauge, hold the throttle open, and pull until the needle stops rising on the gauge. Now you can just set the fast idle feature on the saw which helps hold the throttle plate open. That'll be enough and you, we pulled on it like six times. The needle stopped rising. That's the number that we're looking for. In this case, let's see what we got. 140. Nothing wrong with that. We're going to put a fresh spark plug in here and keep moving forward with the repair. Let's look inside the fuel tank. For whatever reason, these saws, uh, the filters don't last a long time. They get dirty quick. And again, it must just be the environment they're working in. Crap! I can't go front, I'm stinky. Actually works. I might dump gas on myself every day. Yeah, if I keep dumping gas on myself, maybe they won't send me up into the showroom as often, eh? So what I want to do here is I poured the fuel into the funnel, and then I tapped a little bit of the fuel from the funnel into this glass jar. Now, if there's water in the fuel, it's going to sink to the bottom. So when I tapped some out of the bottom of that funnel, I would have got water. And I got water and I got scum and all kinds of goodies in there. It kind of looks like the bottom of a pond or something. It's pretty nasty. I don't know how you manage to do this when you're putting fuel in your saw, but I mean, I even found a stone in there for crying out loud. It, this is most likely a, um, a saw on a crew because most people that pay a thousand dollars for a saw are careful enough to keep the stones out of the tank, you know what I mean? Fuel filter is dirty but not, not even on my top ten list of dirty. We're going to pressure test the fuel line here. The idea being pumping it up to 10 pounds and making sure that it doesn't bleed off. We're testing the integrity of the fuel line. We're testing whether or not the carburetor is sealed. It held 10 pounds. We're going to leave that line in there, put a fresh filter on it, move forward. Put some fresh go-go juice in it.
And uh, we're going to purge this old fuel out of the carburetor and get our fresh fuel pumped through there decent. And then we'll give it a try and see if it'll start or not. She didn't even pop. Let's see if we got spark. Yeah, we got spark. So we're looking for a fuel related problem. Now fuel related problems, everyone thinks carburetor. Well, think of a fuel related problem as the combination of the fuel being distributed by the carburetor and the air that's going through the carburetor. So a fuel related problem could be an air related problem as well. On these models, there's a single screw that I just removed that holds the entire carburetor and air filter assembly to the engine. On the bottom side of this flange is a, a tab, and you just, when you put it back together, you drop the tab into a slot and then push it down and put the screw in there, and it all seals up nice and tight. So we're removing the incoming fuel line from the carburetor right here. And once it's off, we're going to put a little plug into the end of the line so that doesn't go squirting all over the place. Our throttle linkage fell off on this one. No big deal, but look, there's our problem. We got a broken hose on the uh, on the boot there. So it's the fuel related problem, I guess, is that it's getting a lot more air than fuel. Probably not even drawing any fuel because it's just pulling air. Whoa, wait, wait. Nailed it. All right, the circus is leaving town. Let's get back to work. The carburetor, um, there's, we're not even worried about the carburetor. We see that the boot's a problem, and we're just going to move forward with that. I sourced a new boot, and you just put it together the way you took it apart, right? I didn't go into detail on that in this video. It's not really what this video is about. There is a rubber gasket between the carburetor and this plastic block here. Make sure that gasket's in place. There's going to be four screws that hold the carburetor onto that plastic base. We'll get those all tightened down. There was the uh, uh, pulse line. I made sure that was attached to the carburetor that comes from the uh, in the front of the boot back to the carburetor. Then there's this plastic retaining uh, ring, I guess you could call it. It holds the shape of the boot at the opening so it doesn't collapse. You can see the old one laying on the bench there. Uh, make sure that's in place before you move forward on this. We're going to put our main fuel line from the fuel filter onto the carburetor. <laughs> Looks like we spilled a little bit. We're going to want to get our throttle linkage in place. You know, this whole process right here, you got to do it a few times really to get the hang of it, but 
between the throttle linkage and a short fuel line that goes to the purge bulb it uh, and then that flange with the single bolt that bolts it to the engine it's um it can be a little bit tricky and on top of all of that you have to make sure that you drop the choke lever into the blue piece of choke linkage in the right spot. When I first started doing this, I put it together a few times and uh, the choke didn't work. Well, I just missed that step, making sure that was all lined up. And then you run into problems like that. Now, putting a new purge bulb on for some guys is standard procedure. I didn't even look at this purge bulb. I just assumed it'd be all right. That was a mistake, wasn't it? So we're gonna put a new purge bulb on here and get this put back together. Purge bulb has a long and short uh, fitting on it. And the long one is the one that pushes back into the tank, your return line. So we've got our main fuel line on. We've got our throttle linkage kind of in place, at least laying about where it should be. Then we snap it down into the trigger lever, something like that. We're going to connect our short hose from the carburetor to the purge bulb. Simple, right? Now it doesn't look like I've paid any attention to the choke linkage at all, but here we are lining it up, dropping the choke lever into the slot on the blue choke linkage or choke lever. Then that flange on the front gets dropped down into place. Lay the saw on its side so you can see the flange is flush with the engine. And usually what you got to do after you find the screw on your bench is uh, push the flange down into the slot that's holding it on the bottom. All right, we got purge, we got choke. Let's see if this bad boy runs. That's all I got for you on the K760 power cutter repair. Thanks for watching. Later.